Praise the Lord. This morning we have visitors here. And as we reunite everyone, let us welcome our visitors this morning. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, guys. There are some of you, there are some of you that we haven't seen in a long time. We are very happy to see you. Amen? When God gave me the vision of reunion month, le bon Dieu m'a vision pour nous réunir tout ancien membre l'église là. For many churches, when someone leaves, they become enemies. Gan pile l'église là, on moun kite, moun sa vin ennemi. That's not how it should be in the kingdom. When you leave, either you have left because God have called you to another place. Lor kite se si bon Dieu rin le pou an l'autre côté, or something happened. And because something happened, it does not mean we are enemies. I want to say on the podium today, we love you, we care for you, we pray that God will bless you. Amen? Amen? And I pray that you love us too. We pray that you always love us, because we always love you. Amen? Amen? For many of you, you are the foundation that we are standing on. Pour un pile dans nous, c'est vous même qui fondation côté nous camper matin. So it would be dishonor for us not to honor you. Oh, nous parlons avec. So we will honor you. We thank you for coming because your presence means a lot to us. Amen? Amen? So this morning, I am overwhelmed because I see a lot of faces and I see you guys I see the children are growing I pray that God will bless you I pray that God will bless you that God will augment you that God will bring increase into your life you ready? no? no? you ready? okay this morning matin <laughs> This morning, Matin, hein? I would like to speak to you about season. Je vais parler about the season. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. Everything we do, there is a season. Tout nous fait une season. Tell the person next to you, it's your season. Come on, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. It's your season. It's a season. The reason why a lot of people fall into traps. Is because they don't know the season that they are in. And the season that you are in will determine how you behave. And how you behave determine how you get into your next season. Oh, so you have to know who you are. You have to know where you're going. You have to know how to stay without hearing from God. And if you don't hear anything, you don't move. Oh my God. Many of us, God have left us somewhere in a season. And when He comes back to get us, we know, we know where to be found. God is saying, Where I left you, it's the season that you are in. And there are certain things in you that I need to work with. There are certain things I need to work on. And if you move out of that season, then I cannot work in you. Everything we do in life will lead to a destination. 
That's why it is very important to be very careful of what we do in this season. For some of you, this season is to heal. Some of you in this season is to lead. For some of you, this season is to love. This season is to sit. Whatever the season you are in, embrace it. Amen? We have to understand that season we have to understand the season that we are in. We have to take full advantage of it so we won't miss destiny. How many of you believe that you have a destiny? Come on. Come on, say, I have a destiny. Say, I have a destiny. The Bible says there is a season to plant there's a season to sow. There's a season to serve. It's a season to sit. It's a season to move. Some people will quit before they see a result. Everything you plant, it takes time. Now, it depends on what you are planting. That's why it is important that you know what you're planting. Because some seed will grow faster than the other. Come on. And because you don't know what you have planted, and you are expecting something to grow in a day, and it's supposed to plant in a year, it's supposed to grow in a year, it's supposed to um, and you leave now somebody else is harvesting what you have planted oh come on this is a good word right here there are a lot of things that we have planted and we left it there are people that we stop loving because something happened and we got out the relationship too quick. And some relationship we need to get out of. Come on. Amen. Because we have to be careful where we plant. Because where you plant will determine how fast you grow. What's the soil? What's the ground? I want to reach my destination. Either as a pastor, either as a father, either as a businessman. I want RCC to reach its destination. I want you to reach your destination. You have to understand when you what you have planted will have a harvest in its season. I feel the presence of the Lord already. Deuteronomy 28, verse 12. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work, my God, and to bless all the work of your hands, you will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Wow. Wow. Come on, y'all. 
I believe that there is a rain coming. Dans la pluie à venir. And it will pour over this ministry. La tombe sous ministère ça. And it will pour over your life. La tombe sous la vie. And it will pour over your finance. La tombe sous finance. And it will pour over your health. La tombe sous santé. And it will pour over your children. It will pour over your marriage. Petit tout ce mariage. And its season. La saison. Because for many of us, we have been working. You have been planting. And you have not seen it yet. And God is saying, I'm about to rain on your work. I'm about to rain on your seed. I'm about to rain on everything that you have been putting down. Just hold on. Tell somebody, hold on. Come on, tell them, hold on. Tell them like, like you mean it, hold on. Holy, I'm telling you, I feel the presence of the Lord. Holy, how you, Lord God, Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. This morning, you need God to rain on you right now. No, I'm serious. Ludi, stand up. I pray that the Lord will rain. Ludi, stand up. I pray that the Lord will rain over everything that you touch. That, that wherever you go, that the rain cloud will follow you. It will rain, it would rain, it would rain, it would rain, it would rain. Marjorie, I pray that the Lord will rain over you. That it will rain over you. Whew. That it will rain, it will rain, it will rain over every work, over every seed, over everything that you have done. It will rain like never before. Like never before. Gabby, I pray that this rain will catch you 
And it will begin to flow inside of you like never before. And it will rain the blessing. It will rain the healing. Come on, it will rain. It will rain. C'est pour la pluie ça tomber sur ministère ça. Pour tout travail, pour tout ça nous planter, pour nous grand jour que nous récolter. Au nom de Jésus de Nazareth. I pray over every children that this rain will rain upon them that wherever they go that they will see the manifestation of the glory of God. I pray this rain over your marriage. Every dry place is begin to be filled with water from heaven. Come on, I pray this over your life this morning. Arlene, I pray this, this rain will flow on you like oil. Like oil. Deeper connection with God. Amen. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land. Because without rain, no matter what you have planted, will not grow. So we need the rain. Come on, tell God, I need the rain this morning. I need the rain over my finance. I need the rain over my health. I need the rain over my marriage. I need the rain to just flow in me. Everything I touch, I need this rain. Come on, who am I talking to this morning? Some of you, my God, you are looking for a husband. And you need God to reign over the situation. Because you don't got time anymore to be playing. But Come on, who am I talking to? to? Some of you are looking for a wife. You need God to reign over the situation. Because you don't got time anymore to be playing. Just because God gave you a vision to your destiny, that doesn't mean it's going to happen right away. God gave me a dream. God gave me a vision. And I started working on it. One year. Two years. And we, we quit. Because we don't see any harvest. There are things that God is giving to you he has to move people out the way first. He has to deal with your character first. He has to deal with how you handle certain things first. Because God is not in the business of wasting what he has for you. It's going to take some time. Come on, tell the person next to you, it's going to take some time. Why are you guys so dead this morning? Tell the person next to you, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. Amen? It's going to take some trials. It's going to take some tribulation. Listen, the reason why the tribulation comes is to test you to see if you're going to stay on this path for good. <laughs> well, Pastor, I'm a Christian and I should not have any problems. Where is there in the Bible? Because you're a Christian, when the problem comes, God gives you the Holy Spirit to deal with the problems. So the trial and tribulation Paul says, count it all joy when the trial and tribulation comes. There are certain things you have to trust God in it. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Who will make your path straight? Who, who, who? Who, who, who? who? Where is our trust this morning? 
There are certain things we have to learn while we are trying to reach destination. There are certain things you have to learn. There are also things we have to learn to stay away from. I was, as I was preparing this last night, there are certain people you can take with you to your next destination. And for many of us, we think we can take them with us. And God is saying, in order for you to get to the next destination, you're going to have to let them go. Because they don't fit. They don't fit. The puzzle don't fit. The, the puzzle don't fit. So many of you, you're holding on to things that God has have trying to get rid of years ago. Wow. Sometimes God will take us to a process. In order for us to reach destiny, maybe our characters, maybe our pride, maybe our arrogance, maybe the way of thinking, unforgiving, we have fear, anxiety. There are lessons to be learned in the process. Don't give up. Don't cave in. Stay where you are. Don't, ooh, ooh, this is good for some of you. Don't change who you are trying to get people to like who you are. <laughs> Don't change who you are trying to get people to like who you are. Because if you change who you are, they're still not liking who you are. God wants us to reach our destiny. If you don't hear anything this morning, hear this. Galatians 6, verse 9. Galatians 6, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. At the proper time. At the proper time. At the proper time. At the proper time. You will reap a harvest. How many of us ready to reap? Come on, I'm ready to reap. Because for many of us, we are one minute away from giving up. Don't abort the mission. Because it's taking too long. Don't abort the mission because it's taking too long. Amen? Now, destiny, destiny requires discipline. Ooh, see, I'm coming down. I'm getting close to you now. It requires discipline. Pastor, I, 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 I need a husband. Pastor, I well, you still haven't dealt with the hurt the last boyfriend did to you. Hmm. But you need a husband. Wow, I just got quiet. Did you just feel that? Just, just got quiet. Uh, Pastor, I, I, I need a wife. Somebody say discipline. Discipline. The more God can give you, the more requires of you. Please. Train behavior to control your habits. Train your behavior 
to control your habits. Pour contrôler. Because for many of us, our habits are keeping us away from destiny. My God. <laughs> So every year you're saying the same thing. Every year you're saying, I should have did this. Every year you're saying, why I didn't do that. Is your habits are keeping you in the same place year after year. This morning I said, we're going to break habits. So we can reach destiny. Oh, come on, you guys are not here with me this morning. I got to break habits so I can reach destiny. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Woo. Plan bon Dieu. You can go English now. Plan bon Dieu. God's plan. Is to prosper you. He just said English. Oh my bad. Plan bon Dieu. God's plan. C'est pour prospérer. It's to prosper you. C'est pour élever. It's to elevate you. C'est pour mettre dans notre niveau. It's to put you on. Mais pour mettre dans notre niveau. To put you next level. Faut qu'il discipline le niveau qu'on y est qu'on y a. You have to be disciplined. On peut pas demander bon Dieu pour élever. You can ask. You can't ask God to elevate you. If you don't have any discipline, bon Dieu, you are not. The Lord is not going to waste what he's doing with you. Discipline, discipline helps you understand where you are. An undisciplined mind discipline. will disqualify your destiny. So, um, I have a tournament coming up. I didn't say that. That's not what I said. That's, that's not what I said. I, I have a tournament coming up. I already got a keyboard for tournament. I have a basketball tournament. And it's in February. And I said to myself in the dead mind. I have to play in February Confused. So your season come. Season vini. And he's like, this is not what I'm looking for. This is not the person I'm looking for. You should have already graduated already. But you're still in elementary. So I cannot take you to the next season. 
Go back and take the class again. I'll decree this morning. You will not take the class again. You are passing the test. You passing the test with your character. You passing the test with what God has called you to do. Everything He has called you to do, you're gonna pass the test. Tell the person next to you, I will pass the test. No, 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 come on, say it, say it. I will pass the test. Say, I will pass the test. I pass the exam. To reach your next destination, you're going to have to have limited access. Everybody cannot be accessible to you. In, in this season, there are some phone calls you can't take. There are some places you can't go. There are some events you can't go. Listen, my wife texts me the other day. She said, let's go to this place. And when she looked at the flyer to see who was on it, she said, no, we can't go. There are certain people you can't affiliate yourself with in this season. Amen? Amen. Woo. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. I'm almost finished. 33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Oh my God. Well, Pastor, you know, we're just hanging. Your hanging is corrupting who you are. Can God trust you? Can God trust you in the next season? See, do you know why? I, you know why I love this church? Because when people come, they feel the presence of the Lord. Your and they go home with teaching. You didn't just shout. But you actually learned something. Do not be misled. It's right there. Bad company corrupts good character. I like the Creole. It says gâté. The word gâté in English is spoil. So there are people that's trying to reach destiny but the people they associate themselves with is spoiling them. Proverbs 15 verse 32. This is for my men. Oh, I don't know if I should do this, Jessica. This is, this is for the men. This is for the men. Proverbs 15 verse 32. Proverbs 15 verse 32. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves. But those who heed correction gain understanding. I, <laughs> I think this is for everybody. I'm sorry, guys. This is for everybody. This is for everybody. Moun ki refize mache sou prigad yo rayi tet yo. Me moun ki asepte le yo rale zore yo ap vin gen plis. Kompren. 1 Timothy 4 verse 7. I'm just giving you some scriptures I'm, and I'm gonna end. 1 Timothy 4 verse 7. I'm showing you why you need to be in, in, in your destiny. Pa moun tou pou ki sa pou douwe nan and what can stop you from getting there? Have nothing, somebody said nothing, to do with godless myth and old wives, tales. Rather train, they go that word again, train yourself to be godly. Mm. Mm. I 
I'm going to say something that um, I, I had to call some of my mentors. Mm. You don't need to be saved to reach destiny. Is this a correct statement? Because there are people that are not saved and they are fulfilling destiny. You know why? They have discipline. And discipline, discipline. is in the Bible. You don't be black. There's a lot of saved people. They're never reaching destiny because of a lack of discipline. This message is for me too. I could have done so many things. I could have finished my doctorate degree already. I could have, I could have wrote many more books. But there are part of me that still lacks some discipline. How many of you say, Pastor, you talking to me? Come on, Come on say you talking to me, Pastor. You talking to me. January is coming. And for many of us, we're going to have a new year resolution. I, I got to lose this weight, Pastor. And then you start. And we go to the gym. And then you're doing your thing. Mm, mm, mm. And then, you, you know, after a while, you stop. And then December comes. I did not lose the weight. And then January comes. You go back to the gym. February comes. Nothing. March. Nothing. December. I did not lose the weight. And that cycle goes for five, six, seven, eight, nine years. Six, I continue to five, six, nine, ten years. I'm using exercise because I exercise. That's the only reason I'm doing that. I'm not telling you fat. I'm not telling you nothing wrong with you. But but something has to happen. You should look in the mirror. And you said this year, I'm going to be disciplined. Come on, who's with me? I'm going to be disciplined in my finance. I'm going to be disciplined in my marriage. I'm going to be disciplined in my health. Oh, men, please, men, go see a doctor. Amen. Be disciplined in my health. Be disciplined in my serving. Be disciplined in me being a good father. A good mother. A good leader. Be disciplined. Joshua was next in line to lead the people of Israel. But as long as Moses is there, his job was to serve, not lead. Know your season. This morning, I want to pray for this church. I want to pray for you that together we could reach our destiny. That your marriage will fulfill its destiny. That your children 
will fulfill their destiny. You that has careers, that you will reach your destiny. If you want to reach your destiny today, I want you to stand where you are. It's been too long. We've gone in circles. It is time for us to reach destiny. But we cannot reach destiny by ourselves. We need the hands of God upon us. Ooh. We need the hands of God upon us. How many of us, we just need God to be, his hand to be over us. His hands, his hand. You hear what I'm saying? The hand of God. The hand of God. What's your name, sir? In the black. I forget your name. I know you told me before. Bernard. I pray that the hand of God will rest upon you. That everything you do, you prosper. I come against the spirit of shame and everything that's trying to tell you that you're not enough. You are more than enough. Lift up your hands. May your hands be blessed. May everything you touch, you prosper. In Jesus' name. The lady behind Marjorie, right there. What's her name right there? What's your name? Huh? Twelve. May the hands of the Lord rest upon you. That everything that you're looking for you begin to experience it even now before the year ends. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Tef, may the hand of the Lord be upon your business that you begin to experience overflow. Barry and Esther, May the hand of the Lord be upon your life. That increase will come your way. That the oil on your lives begin to increase like never before. That by the time you open your mouth, that the glory of the Lord will show up. And miracles, signs, and wonders will begin to happen. In Jesus' name. Um, Markinson's son, right there. M Mark Kenley, right? Right there. His hand is up. He, uh, he, he wants some of this. Come here, McKinley. Lift up your hands. May the Spirit of the Lord 
continue to speak to you even at this young age. May you be separated for the work of the ministry. I see it all over you. You have a desire for God. And may God bless you. Amen. May God bless you. Your season has come. The season has come. The tears, God is saying, I have heard your cry. It is time. Father, we pray for this congregation that you will bless it that you will keep it, that you would bring increase to this place. We speak unlimited resource in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we love you. We pray your spirit do not leave us this morning. Come on, stay with us, lead us, guide us. Que l'Esprit au marché avec nous. Que l'Esprit au dirige nous. Que l'Esprit va nous sagesse pour nous gérer ça maintenant dans mes noms. Let your spirit give us wisdom so we can manage what you have placed inside of us. Oh my God. Evelyn, come here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Evelyn, come here. Woo! Your season is here. May the Lord bless the works of your hand and every desire in your heart till it be fulfilled. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise this morning. Oh, come on, give God praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. If you are here this morning and you have never given your life to Christ, you could be seated. And this morning you say, Pastor, that word was for me. And I want to give my life to Christ today. Or you have already given your life to Christ. And you said, Pastor, I need to recommit my life. How many of you want to recommit your life or you want to give your life? If that's you, I want you to raise your hand high. I see one. I see two. Come on. Jeremiah, stand up. I mean, Elijah, <laughs> stand up. Gabby, I mean, I keep missing your name today. Uh, Jada, stand up. Stand up where you are. Stand up. Father, I pray over our young people that they will reach their destiny. As they recommit their lives today, I pray that you will bless them. That you will keep them. That you will protect them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And now we're going to move forward because time has passed. We're going to go into announcements and offering. Who's doing that? I want you guys to give it up for Sister Lucy. For you that don't know, Sister Lucy is the director of ministries. Give it up for Sister Lucy, amen. I'm going to stay right there next to her. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Um, we pray that you have received a word this morning. It is now time for us to collect our tithe and offering. We have three ways to give. If you raise your hand, someone will give you an envelope so that you may give. You can give via Cash App, dollar sign RC Church, as well as Zelle at RCC, give at gmail.com. 
nous avons trois gens, trois façons pour capable bailler au fond nos matins. Si vous levez mais on monte capable bailler ou on enveloppe pour capable bailler, nous gagnons au capable via cash app ou soizel. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you because you are God. We thank you, Father God, for your love, for your protection over us each and every single day. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for your encouragement this morning. We thank you for this celebration, Lord, of six years in ministry. Lord God, we ask that you continue to put your hand upon this ministry, Lord, as we learn, as we grow, as we love, Father, as we inspire, as we touch those that need you. We ask, Lord God, that you touch each and every single person, Lord, that is here. May they not leave the same way they came in, but may they have hope, may they have joy, may they have inspiration this morning. Ask, Father, as we come to collect our tithes and offering, that you touch those, Lord, that were able to give. Father God, touch those that have the desire and willingness to give, but are unable to, Lord. Ask that you may touch them, their finances, their homes, their lives, their jobs. Lord, may you provide increase in every aspect of their lives. They need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you for being God. We thank you for all that you will continue to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. Now it is now time for announcements. So our one and only announcement today is Bible study. And we have Bible study on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And on Wednesdays, we have Bible study at 7.30. So if you are not occupied, log in, join us. Let's learn, let's expand our hearts, our minds, and ask questions. So at this time, also very important, we want to welcome our visitors. If you are here for the first time, si c'est première fois ou vini, visitez Revelation Christian Church. Please stand so that we may acknowledge you at this time. Namo do va mete debout pour nous capable applaudir pour nous capable accueillir premier monde qui visite nous pour la première fois matin. We thank God for you. We ask that he may bless you. May he keep you. We thank you for visiting us this morning and we hope to see you once again. You may be seated. Thank you. Alrighty, so as we come to ce our celebration, our media team has a presentation.
Alrighty, our video or slideshow was just a preview of the many things that took place at RCC this year. Um, we had Youth Explosion, where we have many youth gave their life to Christ, um, which was great. Our women's conference, cry out our prayers, and the many different things that we were able to accomplish this year as a ministry. So we do thank and we praise God that he allowed us to touch his people in different ways. Um, and at this moment, it's not a celebration if you don't honor the people who have impacted and placed a hand in the ministry. Um, we don't want to So it's an honor to stand before you all to acknowledge and thank the devoted leaders here at RCC. Uh, we want to thank you for your time, for your support, your sacrifices, your prayers, and overall commitment to the ministry itself. Um, we know that at times it can be challenging. Um, life has its fair, of sh fair share of mountains and valleys, but still you guys, our leaders, our coordinators, our department heads, our ministers, we thank you. You still continue to persevere, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Being a leader is more than just a title. It's more than just a position. It's a commitment. You're saying yes. You're saying yes during the great times. You're saying yes while we laugh. We're saying yes while we have promotions at work, while our health is in great standing, while the family is great but you're also saying yes when it's challenging. You're saying yes when all chaos breaks loose. You're saying yes when it's challenging. You're saying yes when you can't see the promise. You're saying yes when you don't see a way out um, in your personal life. You're saying yes when you're discouraged or when you plain old don't feel like it. But yet you, RCC leaders, you, RCC members, coordinators, department heads, our ministers, our pastors, you said yes, you continue to say yes, and we pray that you will continue to say yes after this year um, finish concludes. And we thank you. We pray that God may continue to bless you and your families. May he keep you. May he comfort you. Um, our celebration shall soon come, so be on the lookout. But we wanted to publicly say thank you. So at this time, I would like to have all our department heads just stand up. Just stand up wherever you are. Our coordinators, youth, children's ministry, women's ministry, men's ministry. I ask that you guys may please stand up where you are. All our leaders, media, camera personnel, ministers, worship team, hospitality. Marjorie, please stand up. We want to thank each and every single one of you. We love you from the bottom of our hearts. We pray that you continue to plant and may God allow you to see the fruits that you have planted here at RCC. May God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. I wanted to honor a few people today. Um, I see uh, Deacon Nicole and his wife. I see, come on. I see Frère Anselm and Sir Shisley. Um, I see a uh, friendly call brother, uh, Evalon and his wife, amen. And I also see Sister Farah with her children, amen. Um, I wanted to say to friendly call and his wife and um, Frere Anciel, Associately. These are the people that were there before you guys were here. Amen. And they serve the ministry. And this morning, we want to say thank you. Amen. We thank you for your dedication. We thank you for your hard work. Because of you, we are standing on your shoulders. Amen. May God bless you and may God keep you. Amen. We love you. Amen. For the people that are here, 
we have a lot of visitors here. We have a lot of old members. The vision of RCC, Vision L'Eglisa, is for us to be a multicultural ministry. C'est pour nous un ministère multiculture. When we launch, we had an English service and a Creole service. Amen? And we want to bring that back. Nous voulons retourner avec service Creole. How many of you looking forward for the Creole service? Okay, I see, I see two people. Combien de nous qui content pour nous retourner avec service Creole? However, in order for us to, we're going to bring you back anyway, but we need your help. 